Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, we could wait for one more minute and then let's get started. Hey, while we wait, uh, you, Marian, you could start sharing the screen. Um, I think we will start with your uh, PL, and then perhaps Kumaraj could help to uh, recap why we um, have this PL. Okay, we'll get started now. Yeah. Uh, Marian or Kumaraj, we cannot hear you. Uh, hi, Rita. Hey, hi, my man. Yeah. Is the call being recorded, Rita? Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, Marianne is going to go walk through the uh, PR, move the time of decapsulation before L2, L3. So we can start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, right, um, so this pull request updates um, Vizio document with, uh, with the behavioral model. So I would like to start with explaining uh, where we found the problem uh, and what were the implications on software. Um, on software side of uh, of the uh, of Sci application, um, so the, what I'm showing right now is uh, the current um, behavioral model for the tunnel deck. Um, it has the following order: uh, you've got the uh, port. Um, uh, Port domain. Uh, from port, you you can go to the router domain, and only from the router domain you can uh, you can get to the tunnel decapsulation table. Um, so this one, 
doesn't seem to have a problem on its own. Uh, however, if you combine it together with the ACLs, um, we, we see that there are complications uh, in terms of how uh, how all of this, uh, how ACLs have to be managed together with the tunnel decap. So just for reference, I have added the uh, example with two packets. So uh, this is the use case that we observed it. We have essentially the same packet that can appear in two different forms. Uh, First case would be it's the packet on its own, and this is the packet that user intended uh, intended uh, his ACL rules uh, for. And another form would be uh, the packet uh, with additional uh, hold on, with additional uh, tunnel encapsulation. And that came from, let's say, a uh, peering device that serves essentially the same role in the network, uh, but it bounces the packet uh, to our device. And uh, what we have is um, a packet could have arrived on its own from the upper, uh, um, upper tier of the switches, or it could have been bounced from, uh, from the same uh, tier. And if we follow this model, we have our uh, free ingress, ingress ACLs. Uh, so over here, the packets are untouched. So we get to the router, the packets are still untouched. And um, we essentially went through the ACLs um, that uh, you that the user defined binding to, and packets are still untouched, and we got to the tunnel decap table, after which uh, the packets uh, the upper packet was decapsulated. So the difference here is that uh, this ACL table is, uh, we'll see two different packets. First one is uh, the one that was intended. Second one is the bounce back and uh, there won't be any match on this packet because it is hidden behind the tongue. Uh, so this one will be, let's say, ignored by the ACL. We will get the same packet only after tunnel decap over here. So the way to solve uh, or to manage ACL in, in this type of behavioral model would be um, to do an explicit binding already after the tunnel. And um, over there, um, essentially bind the same table after the tunnel. So we uh, we could capture uh, this packet that was decapsulated as well. And the behavior would be consistent uh, for both scenarios. Um, and the problem uh, that we see is that um, now we don't really have this uh, let's say, uh, best user experience because uh, there is a uh, portion of the software that manages ACLs and there is a portion of the software that manages tunnels. They can be, uh, let's say, entities that don't really talk to one another that much and they don't need to. Um, however, this, uh, this model, requires you to uh, to keep track of the tunnels and whenever the tunnel will be added you need to uh, carefully manage the binding of the ACL so that you won't miss stuff like that um, so which uh, which prompted us to to look into like, different directions and uh, we asked uh, other vendors uh, how they interpret this because uh, this was 
by the way, like we noticed uh, on real life examples that uh, there is a difference in behavior. Um, so there is another way to uh, to go about the uh, order of tunnel decapsulation. And um, so this is the updated version of tunnel decapsulation, um, which moves it like from from the uh, uh, looking from uh, looking at it from uh, further distance. It simply what it does it moves uh, tunnel decapsulation all the way uh, back into the beginning of the pipeline. And uh, in this case, uh, what you have is um, your free ingress, which is this portion isn't changed. Then if you have a tunnel, a tunneled packet that is meant to be decapsulated, meaning that we have um, tunnel decap entry in the tunnel decap table, and we'll go through the tunnel decap uh, flow, all these purple blocks. We'll get here, same as before, but much earlier. Um, before we get to layer th two, layer three domains. And if not, then it will be just uh, like a transit case. You, you, you don't touch a packet and it gets over here as well. So, um, this is the proposed change, uh, the change, and oh, hold on. Uh, and uh, this is like the uh, extra copy of it, but with the packet, just just to have this example. So we have those two cases. Um, the the regular packet uh, will go through. There will be you no know, entry in the tunnel decap table, so it will go straight over here. So the behavior for this one is unchanged. You go to blue and from blue you go to yellow. But for the tunnel, uh, tunnel packet that is meant to be decapsulated, um, you hit the tunnel decap uh, entry earlier. Um, I, I also, by the way, updated uh, match criteria because it's uh, we noticed it's uh, a little outdated. So now it has a different SIP uh, and a tunnel type, of course. Um, after that, you go to the tunnel table, um, which will indicate that we need to do the decap and also point to the mapper table. So mapper table is uh, what we know and we already have like the side API for that. It's uh, different uh, kinds of uh, mappings that we might have. Uh, so for example, in this case, like if it's a VXLAN, uh, uh, VXLAN uh, tunnel, and uh, for instance, we want to we want it to go to router after decap, so it would be L3 VNI. We would map it to VRF and so on. But before that, we will do Decap uh, and uh, after decap, like, we get the same packet, and uh, then there will be a choice. We either go to layer two domain if that is what was mapped in the tunnel. Um, in that case, there will be the ingress ACL on the layer two on the bridge. If it's a layer three domain as it is uh, depicted in this diagram, uh, then um, both packets will go to the ingress, uh, will have a look up on the ingress ACL in, um, in layer three in the uh, router domain. Um, yeah, so the, this is the proposed change with, which aligns uh, behavior for two types of packets. Um, the one that is decapsulated and the one that isn't. Um, other cases, as far as uh, I looked at, uh, shouldn't be affected. So, uh, Maria, do you want to update the battery stages as well, like the ingress and the ingress? Um, sorry, Kamarash, could you repeat that? I, I can barely hear you. 
uh, do you want to update the active stages like a pre ingress and uh, ingress in this diagram oh you know what uh, yeah right so <laughs> Uh, all over the Vizio, they don't have the names. Um, probably we need to put them. Yeah. 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 I think that would make it clear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Marian, Kumis, just to make sure I really understood this right. So what we are saying is, in the pre-ingress stage, uh, there will be difference in what we observe. The tunnel packet versus a normal packet in the pre-ingress stage. But after that, in the... Uh, Ingress stage and the egress stage, the, both the tunnel uh, tunnel packet that gets decapsulated and a normal packet, both will look similar. Right, yes. Yeah. So over here in pre-ingress, packet is observed still as the original packet, uh, hence the name pre-ingress. But then when you get over here to ingress, yeah, now you, you get uh, it after decap. Okay. Uh -huh. And what doesn't come out here is right. The, the new proposal which Kamresh was saying is uh, we'll introduce a new match qualifier saying uh, is tunnel terminated. Uh, basically, the decap flow, right? Uh, the packet. Uh, new, met new metadata. Uh, probably, yeah, I, I could add that. Like it's um, over here, uh, you would have. Another metadata added uh, tunnel only for the tunnel term. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, for this. Fact. Yeah, I think uh, so. That proposal was like mainly to focus on if the match criteria is same, but let's say if we have like two different actions, so we want to match uh, whether the packet is uh, tunnel terminated or like just like a regular packet, and then want to have like a two different actions. So the previous one was to have the tunnel bind point, but uh, I think uh, instead of that, we'll just add a new attribute and then we'll just match on that part. Yeah, I okay. think I, yeah, I will add that attribute and create a new PR later. Okay, okay. And that attribute will be based on this metadata for the tunnel flows. Whenever we go via this tunnel decap flow, on those packets, this metadata would be set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably <laughs> over here. Uh, if we if we decast. So, so, so Kumresh, would that be enough for cases where you have uh, multiple types of tunnels getting terminated, uh, or even, for example, GRE and VXLAN getting terminated, uh, or even for VXLAN, you might have cases where you have tunnel termination from coming from outside versus inside, like. Right, and you may want to differentiate between the tunnels originated from outside the data center, let's say, versus inside. Would a bit enough, or or do we need something like a field to say, you know, it's not a decap, and what kind of tunnel was decap so like? We yeah, already think... have the metadata with the tunnel type. So the type will always, let's say, only say GRE versus VXLAN, right? But there are cases like uh, DCI data center interconnect where uh, typically people differentiate between tunnels which originated outside the data center versus inside. Right. Ah, you you were saying we created more than one tunnel, and depending on which tunnel decap entry we hit, uh, we'll get another inside terminology and not a different tunnel object ID. Yeah, it could not. I mean, I'm just saying that a single bit tunnel decap may not be enough. You, you may need uh, more than a single bit. Like the tunnel decap is true with a single flag, right? You may need something like a field or, or, or maybe the tunnel ID is enough to solve that problem, but it's not clear that tunnel ID itself is enough. Yeah, I think uh, and a typical use case will be DCI, the data center interconnect. Yeah, in some cases, like uh... For example, in smart switch cases, right? Uh, because the tunnel is from the other T1, uh, so we can most likely it would be uh, just the VXLAN, and uh, we could we could have like other match criteria like uh, match on the uh, other uh, other IP fields to make sure that okay this packet is uh, <coughs> from the other other T1. Uh, but yeah, I think you are right. Like in case if you want to have like a multiple different types of tunnel uh, terminated and you want to match, uh, we may want to introduce a type also. But uh, yeah, I think for now, we are thinking only about the tunnel terminate plan. In 
case if you want to have like a, a different set of uh, tunnel types then you can have uh, another plan okay yeah we can add it later when the yeah it's more, spe more specific use case for it. yeah yeah uh, yeah Kumarish, i don't understand why do you need that uh, so tunnel is a tunnel right whether it's originated within the data center or is being terminated across DCI? No, I think... Uh, how, how does it matter? No, I think the use case, like, suppose if you want to batch on only a specific type of tunnel, right? What is type? Type as in the... Like the XN theory or... IP and IP. Okay, so it's type, like IP and IP, GRE, VXN, etc. Okay, so that's yeah. the type of the tunnel, all right? Yeah, yeah. So just to want to make sure, like, if you want to match only on the VXLAN, let's say there is a use case, right? Uh, and where you can say, like, a tunnel terminate flag, and you can also have the tunnel type, right? Right, right. But for that, you already have a, a UDP desk port, right? Why would Jay, you... I was thinking more about the use cases, something like, for example, some of the use cases I've seen is like, sometimes people want to learn only for, from the tunnels which originated within a data center and not from outside the data center because the uh, the learning for tunnel outside the data center is done through BGP, let's say. But right, right. For, yeah, so those are the I, cases you may need additional. I understand, I understand. But those tunnels are typically uh, well-defined, either using a VNID or, or yeah, some yeah. other... Yeah, fees. exactly. You don't so need you, another a type bit. No, not bit in the result, not in the. So let's say you match on VNI, right? Because it, it was using a specific VNI or a specific set of VNIs for those, right? So then you go to this tunnel mapper table, let's say, which matches on VNI, right? Because that's the only table which matches on VNI. And it right, will output but, another flag or something saying don't you, run. Correct, correct. But then you can set internal metadata, right? Well, VNI. that is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, but, but so that's yeah, what I'm okay. saying. We, we may need more metadata than the tunnel recap is true. Right, exactly. but that's already there. You don't need a new. That match on metadata is already present. Match is present, but setting of metadata is what I'm talking about. Even on setting is present. That would be set by the uh, previous stage, right? So let's say the tunnel decap is happening. At that time, you do the match on the tunnel headers. You have all the tunnel headers, and uh, you can set the metadata at that stage, which is the pre-ingress stage. And once you have yeah. the metadata, then you can use it as a match criteria anywhere follow on. Yeah, and what I'm saying is that because we explicit, explicitly adding this metadata tunnel decap is true, right? that could also have been set at the tunnel decap table, right? Uh, because that's where you decided to decap the tunnel. So uh, what I was pointing out is there may be other use cases other than the single flag. You will set it in the tunnel decap table. That is true, or in the or in one of the three tables we have shown here. Right, right. On... yeah. But just just a match on method. So, Marion, we already have that match criteria, right, on a metadata. Uh, no, tunnel decap selected. No, currently I don't think we have any metadata to match the tunnel termination. In the tunnel decap case, we are talking about uh, the ACLs, right? Yeah. I thought that's we have a match on metadata. I mean, that's the whole point. Otherwise, uh, we can verify it. Uh, we can come back on it. But I, if I, as as far as I recall, the whole concept is any stage ACL stage can spit out a metadata, which can be used by the following stage. Oh, uh, is it a user metadata that you were talking? Yeah, user metadata, right? I and thought it's... like I thought that yeah, was but... needed to uh, pass between ingress and egress. Uh, you can use even between stages as well, but we can take a look. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But there is a concept of metadata which is opaque information, and can be used uh, as a you know vendor specific way as well as the use case which you are defining, because typically you know there is no concept of external tunnels and internal tunnels, explicitly even inside there is no such thing. It's all derived based on some IP addressing or VNID. Yeah, I think currently we have the metadata setting in the Apple, but uh, I don't think we have any metadata setting in the tunnel decap station table. Okay, yeah, we can, we can so take a look at that. Yeah. yeah, if we add that you set user metadata action in the tunnel decap table, right? Yeah. 
and okay. solves the problem because people who need that feature can simply use it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Th that, that if it's not there, we can do that. Definitely, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I had one more question. Like for the how do how is the outer work derived here? Like some somewhere you have to derive an outer work for the for the for the tunnel, right? Isn't that the case? Like we should should we not have an outer work here to do a tunnel decap? Um, it's uh, the VRF uh, is uh, from the tunnel mapper table. No, but that's the inner VRF, right? I think. Uh... Krishna is asking about the outer VRF, which you need to but there, dip and sip for the tunnel decap table. There is, uh, there is no outer VRF because we do deep before, uh, before the router domain. Unless you're talking about the case that we don't do tunnel decapsulation. So basically, we, we are assuming that all tunnels are in the same VRF. A global VR app or something like that. The tunnel IP addresses are in global VR app. I think that's the SI model, I guess, right? We just have the either you can have a SIP comma dip or just the the tunnel term entry the way it's defined today, right? It doesn't take a out VRF. No, but it, it derives a rift though, right? Like the outer rift can have different verbs, is what I thought. Like you can have an outer rift and inner rift, and outer rift can give you a different verb than the pattern inner. <coughs> Okay, the the key to terminate the tunnel, right? That is only based on sip and dip. Uh, it doesn't take anything else, right? In the sense that the key is today isn't uh, like a VRF comma sip comma dip. The tunnel term entry, right? Whatever is inside the tunnel term entry, the way it's defined. Let me. Do. Yeah, so that's the uh, Krishna's point, right? That assumes that every all the tunnels are in the default world. Right? Global, global, yeah, in the default world. Did, did we lose any um, functionality from before then? I don't see things so. today, right? Today, the way it's defined is uh, source IP, dist IP. That's all it takes for tunnel term. Let me check the tunnel term. Yeah, I, I don't think we lose any functionality. That's the SI model for tunnels. Tunnels today, we cannot do any uh, look up on the on a VRF, which is on a tunnel riff. Okay. Krishna, is there a use case for you? I mean, that's that's a separate discussion completely. Where the tunnels are terminated coming in on a VRF? No, no, no. I was no, we didn't have a use case. I, I, I think the previous company like we did have like where like you we need to have like to have two different verbs for us like one for outer and one for inner so that's that's why yes i i, I was under the same assumption that like we're also losing some functionality here if that's not the case anything okay yeah yeah because psi model is a little bit different in psi if you see that we don't have you know the tunnel comes on a port and then port has a binding to vrf etc right but that port binding to vrf becomes active only after the tunnel decap or if it's a tunnel, tunnel transit case right like marianne was pointing if the it's a transit case then the yeah, port vrf will be active if it's a decap case then after the decap the vrf becomes active on that port if tunnel is coming on that port but yeah, but, we do, yeah, we don't after, do... after decap you um you use the vrf Sorry, that was mapped after decap the vrf is used uh, from Tunnel mapping table. Correct. Yeah. Okay. But but it will be a tunnel mapping table. But mapper is what's the binding of a mapper? I don't recall. Is it a port or? No, it's a tunnel. It's a tunnel. So then a tunnel coming in on any port will get a VRF, right? Same here, because there's no. We don't use port in the tunnel decap table, right? So then you cannot mm -hmm. give you a separate tunnel ID based on the port. And if, if you don't get a separate tunnel ID, then you cannot bind it to a different mapper. So then the net result is that it doesn't matter which port the packet came in on, you will basically derive the same inner VRF, VRF because there's no, this port anywhere in the port is not there anywhere in the lookup. Okay. Right. The tunnel is not associated with the port. Uh, tunnel decap is only based on the 
fields in the packet. Right. Yeah, I think this this may need. Yeah, this is a little bit. I I see what Krishna is saying here. This this model is a little bit different than what even I have seen traditionally. Yeah, everywhere I have worked for, like the there was always a outer and inner world. Even though the most of the use cases only require global, we are up for our outer. But there were use cases where the tunnels, outer tunnels, are in different VRFs. So I think this is a bit of a simplistic model in that sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That looks like we have not hit a complex deployment to face that. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we'll get there. Uh, Eventually, we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, actually, the side tunnel term table entry has a VR ID, but uh, it's not clear how this VR ID will be derived uh, from the packet flow, right? The side tunnel term table entry does have an attribute called VR ID. Uh, for which ID. tunnel types is it valid? Can you remind me? Sorry, uh, which? Which tunnel types is this uh, attribute valid for? Oh, it's not specified, uh, Marianne. It's uh, just oh, uh, so for uh, valid only. Yeah. And the interesting part is, right, from a given packet, how would you derive this VR virtual router ID is not clear. Especially now, since we are trying to move this uh, before the L3 lookup, right? But actually, in this flow, we have a pre ingress actual table, right, in case. If you want to set yeah. the VR ID, you can. Okay. At least based on this flow. Okay, so it can be an ACL based VR ID, but it won't be that incoming late inter route interface yeah. based VR. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we should still clarify how the default. I mean, in case ACL is not hit or not there, like what where the default VR ID for VR ID will come for because it's already in the target termination. I don't think is it is optional a, or let me see. Yeah. I don't think there is a default VRF. Uh, you can map VRF from like uh, in case of the XLAN, you can map it from VNI. Okay. We, we have these mappers, we have VNI to VRF mapper. Defined. But that could be the inner one, right? That's not the outer VRF. No, but the, there is no like outer VRF anymore uh, after the gap because there is no outer. No, but we do have that, like uh, Ravi saying that, right, right? The VR ID is part of the tunnel termination entry. Yeah, it's a mandatory parameter. So because it's mandatory, it's, it has to come from somewhere, right? We could make it optional, but that's a big change. Uh, I see, I see. Uh, it, in the API, you're saying there is a VR ID. Yes, a mandatory I parameter. I don't remember what it's for. Yeah. Okay, I'll write it down. I'll try to clarify that item. So it, it's in the tunnel termination uh, entry? Yes, Maria. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks. Tunnel term table entry. Mm -hmm. But I think this flow is much better, I think, right? One more time. Maybe I'll just go back and check. But uh, to me, this looks better. Moving this tunnel decap early. Yeah, logically, this, this is a much nicer flow, right? Yeah. Makes much more sense, yeah. Regarding the metadata the, for the uh, tunnel for the ACL, would that be a property of the tunnel ID or the VNI? So, uh, Avya, is it uh, the new metadata that we'll be adding? Is that the question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it can be part of the tunnel term table uh, where you can say like a tunnel uh, termination value. We can set.
Uh, Marian, maybe the first table, right? Instead of calling it tunnel decap table, we might uh, call it tunnel term uh, entry table. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's how it's called in. Yeah, that's true. Tunnel termination, yeah. Then there's a tunnel table, the tunnel table points to tunnel map entry. Tunnel map entry. Yeah, tunnel table and the tunnel table terms to tunnel map entry. Yeah. Uh, this flow specific to VXLAN. Okay, so tunnel map entry. Yeah, the, there wasn't a jury decap. But yeah, I yeah. Think I it's, uh, but I think it's all similar, maybe. Yeah. It'll be GRE key or a transit GRE key. Yeah. yeah, it's just that with VXLAN, you have more options. Yeah. With VXLAN, you can go to L2. L2, L3. Okay. okay, yeah. In the other case, you'll just have the yellow flow, the router flow alone. So, okay. GRE keys. But, but Maria, it's still applied to GRE also, right? In the sound that stages will be skipped. Like the mapper table, but the flow applies to GRE as well, right? I believe so. Yeah. But I'm just trying to map it to the Sai objects. What is the, the last box, right? The last purple box, a tunnel decap uh, map. To it's the just Sai. The, yeah, it's just the decap itself. Like stripping, it's not in the Sai API. It's just stripping it's the just headers. Stripping. Okay, okay. Rearranging the fields. Okay. Just trying to think uh, to extend this right. Just to, whatever we have been doing for decap or termination, the same thing we might need in the origination case also, right? In the, in the egress, I might want to know whether it's in a tunnel originated or not. Um, let me think of an example. Again, if it's ACL, right? And if you're applying uh, egress ACLs on the final ongoing packet, there might be use cases where the, someone may want to match on a tunnel encapsulated packet versus not. Hmm. In the case the ACL is applied on the finally related packet. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So I'm just trying to see if I if I just say uh, match on a say source IP, does it mean uh, it matches the payload source IP or the in the case of tunnel origination, would it match the payload source IP or will it match the outer source IP address, right? When somebody just says match source IP. Uh, today, what uh, we are saying is in uh, for tunnel origination case, uh, in the <coughs> ingress and egress stages, it's going to be for both, it's going to be the same. When I say match source IP, I'm always going to match the payload. Are we saying that or maybe? Oh, yeah, let's look at yeah. that. In the pre ingress stage, that's a difference, but uh, in the ingress and egress stage, right? Uh, either it's tunnel terminated or a plain packeted. Right? Both of the case will, in the tunnel terminated case, we'll be matching the payload the packet fields in the ingress and egress stages. This is So you're talking about the decap or? Uh... Uh, I think decap, you're just saying in decap, just recapping whatever you explained it, but yeah. In the yeah. bottom two ACL tables, which represent the bottom right represents yeah. the ingress stage and the bottom left represents the egress right in both yeah, yeah. of these cases match on a say source ip or dest ip will match the payload uh, fields not on uh, the left right the left table should match on the outer source ip no no in the bottom whatever we're seeing in the bottom row right in the bottom row yeah the bottom left, left table is after the packet modification right oh, no 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 both are uh, matching the payload fields 
Yeah, th this is uh, at least this diagram. Uh, so this one is not doesn't show tunnel, right? In gap. Okay. Yeah, there is no tunnel and cup. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. We're just saying for decap, what's the flow, right? Now we'll have to see similarly for end cap. How does it look? Oh, yes. Yeah, so for end cap, you have so this is the uh, the exine end cap. Uh, in this case, it's from from the bridge, but um, okay. So we probably we need to name them. So this is the pre ingress. Now we have this one and this one. This port. So th this is the ingress. Uh, it's in the same place, and it it will see the already modified. Uh -huh. So you are saying it will match the outer one. Yes. Because uh, we pushed the end cap early tunnel table entries. Yeah, it's after the end caps. So yeah, this ACL should be the outer one, right? <coughs> okay. This is after the end cap, okay. Because there's already one before the before the cap. So if you want to always match on the payload, then that one should be used, right? Mm -hmm. Which I'm one not sure. this one? I don't know. This one looks like it's before the cap, the ingress. Yeah, I'm not sure which thing. one it is mapped inside to. Um, yeah, the stage is not clear. Yeah, I need to clarify that too. It is after the ingress because you already know the ingress port because the one before that says output interface is tunnel port. So, yeah, all the egress lookups have been done on the payload. Not right. really, right? Because the actual physical uh, egress is going to be delayed after the next stop. Uh, it's, no, it's, not the, the it's not the physical egress. This is the tunnel port. Yeah. yeah. So you already know that you have already done the lookup on the payload, essentially. In this case, FTB L2 lookup, right? And the uh, L2 lookup says go to tunnel. So this is a match on the tunnel port. Not sure this one is um, mapped to site API. So this one seems to be clear, but this one uh, with the tunnel port, not sure about that. Yeah, what yeah. is the attachment point? It's... What's the stage, right? Even what's the actual stage, it's not clear. Yeah, and also we have the tactile tableless egress port. Hmm. Um, Arian, you had the table uh, on the packet fields for the end cap. Can you pull it up so that at least? I'm sorry, I don't understand which table you're talking about. The one which we were discussing on email, the packet mm. field match criteria. It was only for DCAT. We did not did for NCAP? No. Hmm. Oh, so maybe that's the a good bottom point. table is I thought we did for the next one. Yeah. NCAP as well. No, no. Huh? The other thing is that the table at the bottom here is before the next stop is looked up. So we don't know the outgoing port. So that table cannot be attached to the outgoing port. So. Yeah, this flow does not look right to me, Marianne. This it's the discrepancy in this. So packet comes in. Uh, it's a you know an uncapped packet, mm -hmm. right? So your pre ingress will be on the original packet, which is not yet uncapped. Mm -hmm. Okay, lookup will tell us that. Uh, so we go to the L3 interface processing, right? So echo table, uh, then go to the router flow. The router flow will look uh, do the lookup. Oh, and you, you first go to the bridge because this is... Uh, yeah, this is like like the extent flow. In the diagram yeah, the, this example is L2 extent. Oh, this uh, example is L2 extent. Okay, I was just looking for the router flow. Uh, let's see if we have... A little bit easier to. Yeah, I don't think we have a L3 VXLAN in cap flow. Yeah, but the L2 VXLAN should be working as well. So it should be working as well, right? Yeah. So 
So we do look up, we do end up from FDB. After that, we go to the underlay route. Okay, so here your tunnel table. Okay, and after that, your tunnel end cap has happened. Tunnel end cap has happened, and you get the. So in this case, the. Okay, so this one is before the router table. This is really confusing. So this becomes now pre-ingress, right? The Apple table at the bottom. Yeah, that table at the bottom definitely needs to move to the left and after the next top table, because then you get the ingress port and you can advise right. the port, yeah. But that's ingress side. Why would uh, move to the left? It's in the same place as uh, every other uh, router case. No, but even in the other router case, right? And we can take a look at that, right? Uh, for the other router case, is the table uh, simple? The egress routing case is the is the ACL table after next stop or before next stop? Can you go to the egress? Uh, I mean, the simple I think routing the, this is the ingress table. I think whatever is Mariana's highlighted that stands for an yeah. ingress ACL stage. That, address. Yeah. That's that's ingress ingress stage. stage. Yeah. I, I think I can clarify this at least the way that I read it. Uh, this seems to me like a two stage forwarding uh, model. Yeah. And you're, you're and doing uh, resarc after the in cap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. This is not this is this for the research case because after the incap you're recirculating and the packet goes back to English pipeline and that's where it shows the English stages. Well, that, that, that's a discrete pipeline. That's correct. We did the NCAP. Now we need to go to the router to do underlay routing. On the, we need to do the routing on the uh, IP header of the tunnel encapsulation. That's the logical model. No, that part is correct, uh, right? And you can either do with research and without research, right? The question is that uh, would you apply ACL? Uh, would you apply ingress ACL at that point again, or would you apply egress ACL? Because you know after the encapsulation, the packet is going out. You have to apply egress ACL, right? I think this okay, needs should be able to both. Yeah, this needs discussion. Uh, so here, are you trying to uh, create a two-stage lookup or what are we trying to do? I don't, it... know, I don't know what this two-stage lookup is. My point is that after you do the any type of NCOP, GRE NCOP, the XN NCOP, you need to go to the router, right? You need True. to enter the router. So, so today right so I, I think let me just clarify what you know two stage one stage is so today when the packet comes in and we do the NCAP process uh, while doing the NCAP process the the next hop resolution is done as if it's done on the NCAP packet right so we don't do first lookup find out the tunnel next hop and then do the another lookup and then find the actual egress port right so that's just the one stage Two stage lookup, research is your first pipeline is on the original packet, packet goes and cap, reinserted back in the ingress, and again goes through the full pipeline. Right? So in that case, all your blocks get replicated. Uh, no, it's not it's not all your blocks. We have discrete blocks for the router, for the right. bridge. Uh you you may or may not go through the router twice. So if it's uh, if let's say uh, it's layer three and cup case, like for example, if it's GRE or uh, L3VXLAN, then yeah, you you will do uh, lookup first. You will get the tunnel next up. After uh, after that, you will get you'll do the tunnel encapsulation, and then you'll go to the router again for the underlay. But uh, like in this example, you go to the router only once because uh, you. Um, your encapsulation would derive from layer two. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily that you, you would uh, you would go to the router twice. No, Marian, you we may... are saying the same thing, right? In the either case, for the outer packet, we go to the router. The inner one, of course, yeah. You, you have to go to the router. 
Yeah, yeah. So I think we are we are saying the same thing. That the, all the question is where will the ACL be, right? And for the final pass, when you go through the router, uh, should the ACL be applied after the routing, because the packet is going on the egress port now, and after the next stop table, you will know the egress port. So shouldn't the ACL be applied after that so you can bind that ACL to egress? But why why would you? I think there is ACL after. The, there oh, is okay. one. It's not. It's not. It's just uh, uh, this diagram ends too soon. But uh, if if you take the router flow uh, in general, there there is also a cell in the beginning. No, but then you have basically if you think about this way if i follow this diagram right there are three acls then the two which are shown on this diagram and sure and the and third the, one which is after you're saying right so it's yeah and we don't know where the two the first that okay let's assume what you're saying is true then the third one will bind to the port uh what about the other two where do they where's the bind point for this port these tables so this one is router interface um this one is a uh, tunnel port which i don't think we have inside api this but one again, is simple. When you say router interface which router interface because you don't know the egress router interface yet right because that will come after the next one no no that's ingress that's the ingress side this is your ingress route. egress is over there no, but what is ingress rip at this time? The packet has been routed, so why? And we have already applied the ingress tackle which matched to ingress rip on the same packet. So why would we do it again? I mean, the ingress table has already been applied. Well, it, when you enter the router, you enter it through the router interface, right? Which is your ingress router interface. So I'm in the move for whatever you're doing. What, what are you saying? Uh, between 1230 and 1240. Sorry, let me catch that. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can, we can. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, so whenever you enter the router domain, you always enter it through the ingress router interface. So if you enter it from the tunnel, uh, we should be able to set the ingress router interface over here somehow. Let me see how we do that. Mm, it's not shown in here. Uh, can I ask more fundamental question? Mm -hmm. I think just just the flow itself. I think there is a. It would be good if we create a baseline. So for L two VX LAN, forget the SI pipeline, right? Just normal processing. What happens? Packet comes on a port, right? Yeah. Port is configured in a bridge mode. Is it a L two or a L three port? For L two VX LAN. Yeah, it will be uh, L2 port because it's a member of a bridge or a VLAN. Okay, right. And then we do the uh, FDP lookup, etc. And we right. found that there's an L2 end cap. Mm -hmm. After the L2 end cap is done, right? Mm -hmm. Now, ideally, right, you can either completely resolve the next stop or go through this forwarding where the end cap lookup happens. And then we resolve the next stop. So question is when we do the end cap lookup, you really don't have an ingress port, right? The, this router interface, which you are calling here after the tunnel in cap, is this an no, ingress riff or? It, it's not the port riff. I'm I'm trying to remember what riff is this. It's not the port riff. It can only be some kind of logical riff, some kind of tunnel logical riff, if we can derive it somehow. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll need to look up the uh my api we should set this ref somewhere it's not the port route interface that's uh, i'm sure that. logically it's the tunnel interface 
Yeah, yeah so but tunnel interface, yeah, tunnel interface is not, and it's already resolved. Tunnel is already done and over now. So at least, Marian, my, you know, and I can verify the flow. Typically, you know, when in the bridging board, you do the tunnel in cap, okay, along with it, you will resolve. Either you can do another lookup or you will resolve to the next stop and straight away it land up on the egress. And I think that's where the confusion is coming, that why you do need uh, another ACL table. And and can it be an ingress table? No, no, hold on. It's not why you need the ACL table. It's that uh, you're saying you, you resolve along with the tunnel, you resolve the next stop. I, I don't agree with that. Uh, what? No, that's fine. And if we don't resolve, we do another lookup, right? Then lookup can happen you know, just as a forwarding information, you really don't have this RIF binding. And if you have this RIF, what you're calling, then curious to know, then how do we do that? Do we have Apple binding for this object? No, so uh, uh, you're right, Jay, but only thing I want to point out is that, right, again, before you do a lookup, again, you need a VRF for the lookup, right, route lookup. So that VRF has to come from some RIF. And that RIF has to be set by the Tunnel table. I mean, either yeah. RIF or VRF has to come from the tunnel table. I mean, we, we VRF are, can come the... from the tunnel uh, mappers, right? So there is a set. No, no. Oh, oh, um, okay, no, but that's, there is a, no tunnel. Tunnel. that's a VNI. It's the reverse map, right? In this direction. That, that, yeah, that's, oh, that's your... a VNI. Sorry, that's a VNI for this. You track. only get the VNI in the map for M. Right. That's correct. So right. in order to get the VRF for the underlay routing, you need to get it from the uh, router interface. And the router interface is the attribute of a tunnel from what I see in the site. Maybe no, it's not. That, uh, so, Marian, I think that is what I remember also. The tunnel mm -hmm. gives you a RIF, and then from RIF, you can derive a VRF for the lookup, for right. the route lookup. Uh, what I don't get is that uh, why is the ACL there? Because you don't attach ACL to that RIF because that's a tunnel RIF, and only purpose for that tunnel RIF is to derive a VRF. From what I remember, from because all the router interfaces are the same, you can no, attach but... ACL to any router interface. I think that's the. Uh, but that's then you the have to remove the previous we... one. I mean, it, the, you... which previous one? Uh, the ACL table can... to egress port. Ah, this I... one. I, I think it's not defined in SAI. Um, so. I will. I will need to uh, to remember why this one is here. I, I'm also a little confused about this one. This one. This one is just naturally here because this is the router flow. So you I'm basically sure apply two ACLs, right? One on the tunnel interface and the other one on the outgoing interface, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I think yeah, those two I can understand. The ACL table egress port is. Basically, the two tables which are currently shown in this diagram, only one of them can be used. Only one of them can be applied to the tunnel, and the third one, and the and the one should be after the next stop table, right? Which you showed earlier. But no, no, no. One no. Of them Hold on. Two. We have. Like... Yeah. So that one is good. The one you just added. Yeah. The the one I cannot get is the ACL table to egress port because. Then you have three ACL tables, and we only have two RIFs essentially. There's the outgoing RIF, and then there's a the tunnel RIF. So you yeah, yeah. So th that's why I'm saying I don't remember uh, how this one is defined exactly because it it's not on the RIF; it's on the right. tunnel port, which I don't recall having that defined inside. So I would need to uh, to actually refresh my memory on this one uh, okay. because. You're right, but if you go back, I'm just trying to understand the diagram, right? Mm -hmm. What I, I don't get is what is the concept of tunnel port? Because if you just go <laughs> up, right, you just follow the diagram before before egress is here. Yeah, right there. Just go down below. It says output. Yeah, pro probably. Yeah, because what Sai API has, it's not tunnel port. It's uh, when when you go from um. So the lookup happens over here, right, in the FDB table. Yeah. yeah. And what you get from this one is not the, the, as the result of the loop. According to SAI API, you get tunnel ID. ID. Or, 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 yeah, or something. Or is it a bridge port? What, what do we get with the SAI API? 
if we would build the FDB entry for tunnel and how would that look like? Um, let me just pull this one up. So we have our we have our FDB. Where do we go from there? The FDB entry. Uh, MAC address and uh, uh, bridge ID. And as the action, what we get as a result of the lookup is. So, so there's an endpoint IP there, which is what I thought it gets, right? That you get an endpoint IP, which is the outer IP for which you do the, yeah, the route lookup, right? No, but you need to get like the tunnel objects from somewhere. IP itself is not enough. You don't know the bridge port ID. The, I think the bridge port ID, the, the two attributes above, the and we also get a bridge port IP. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so this and is I the think bridge that maps port. To tunnel. Yeah. Oh, so that yeah, so, port so there is the bridge port. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that, to be more specific, this is the bridge port. Yeah. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Hey, uh, we are actually at the time, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. yeah, you had a poor as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, do do would, would we like to continue next week, next Thursday? Uh, are you guys available? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, next next Thursday. Uh, okay, maybe someone is not. I'm just speaking for myself. Uh, who who would not be available next Thursday? Okay, yeah, so then let's continue next Thursday then. Yeah, I think I uh, could uh, still um, uh, discuss our email too, right, before that. Yeah, yeah thanks. Okay, all right, thank you. Bye-bye.